Yeah. Don't come across the water. Yeah. Every nigga got a cutter. Yeah. 38 revolver special. Yeah. Murder rate been the highest. 30 inches right better. Yeah. Dope boy, paint the mirror. Where you from? I'm from Florida. Yeah. I go by Problem Child Tweezy, aka PC Tweezy. I'm from Palm Beach County, Florida. The name speaks for us, so I was just always bad as hell. Like one of the most badass kids in the project. Just everybody just like, you gonna be a problem child one day, uh, you know. So I got the name from that. Everybody just called me that. A tweezy, either or, you know. What, what, what year that was Nelly, Nelly came out? It was 2000 or something like that. I had to be like 10, it was something, yeah, it was 10, I was 10. And my mama, and I had I had that album, The Country Grandma, and Easy E. My mama used to beat my ass for listening to Easy E, but that's why I got influenced. I used to always like memorize their raps, and I had a rapper, like we had a rapper named Triple J and Palm Beach, like he was like my like biggest influence, you know what I'm saying? So I used to always been good with words too. Like I always could talk good and very intelligent. Like I had a sensible vocabulary, you know what I'm saying? I don't look like it, but I always had that. So I was always good with words, you know what I'm saying? So my first experience was bumping that Nelly Country Grandma and mixing it with that Easy E. Oh, Houdini, LL Cool J. I know this before my time, but that's what my stepdad had in the house, you know what I'm saying? So I used to listen to that and then eventually I started just trying to write my own raps and it worked for me. Man, look, man, like, when niggas be like, 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 Niggas be on some shit like, man, nigga don't really fuck with the hood. Like, when they go to making a little money, I see why, bro. Like, I really see why, bro. Like, I got niggas in my hood, down, like, shh. Down bad, bro. Down bad. They soul ain't right. They heart ain't right, yeah. A nigga, a nigga that I never, you know what I'm saying, think about that a switch on me. Like, a nigga that you know 20 something years, like, I'll kill you. I worked at um, Southern, Southern Kitchen for like a weekend, and they fired me because I had bullet holes in my car. I had got shot at, and they fired me. They were giving me 150. I worked like two days, though. Yeah, that was the only time I, I was about like 15, something like that. Hey, Stony Brook Project. We ain't on my side of town, I need this. We ain't on my side of town, my side of town, other side of town. We on Tweezy's side of town. Fifth Street, Bree. He bought, he bought this whole thing together, you know. Like, um, differences because of where we from. He from downtown, I'm from uptown. So in the streets, we always, not not me and him, or me and his hood or nothing like that, but the whole cities used to beef. Like before we got in the streets, it been like that. So when you see a nigga from downtown or Rivera, you from the opposite side, you ain't really gonna just be friendly with this person, you feel me? And me and him like brothers, like we've been arguing for like, five, seven years, <laughs> like arguing, like doing business, arguing with each other, acting like it was smoke and really love, you feel me? He put all this together, like, so I definitely gotta give him a big credit for that. He keep it, he one of them old, old coon type of niggas, you feel me? Like he one of them old niggas always trying to preach and shit. He think he out sharp and this shit, but he be saying some real shit though, you feel me? <laughs> Uh, he was just getting out of prison. And he was doing something with my cousin at the time. My cousin was the CEO at the time. My cousin was like, man, y'all doing y'all thing in the city, man. I want you to do something with my little homie. And you know, when I bought into him, I'm like, damn, I had already been hearing a lot of his shit when he was walked up. And I never knew who he was. So when I finally met him, I'm like, damn, I'm a fan of his shit, bro. I really fuck with you. When it comes to music, it's serious at all times, you feel me? He just got on my ass up there because I left the studio early. You feel me? So he one of them people, he's serious at all times. It ain't never no not serious, man. When he in the studio, is serious. You feel me? When his music is serious. You know, he can tell you, bitch, I got eight kids, bitch. Bitch, this all I got. He tell you, so he ain't never not taking it serious. We used to bump heads a lot, you feel me? We actually don't, we actually don't argue. We got, got real, real high tempo, me and him a couple times, but we don't go through that no more. His mama fighting cancer right now, you feel me? So it's like, 
he'll call me and we'll talk, like, you feel me? Like, it's more, more personal shit, you know? Like, we connected better, like, ever since then. How many grandkids you got? Ten. Yeah, ma, I ain't got that many. Yeah, you just like your dad. <laughs> Drop a dick, drop, drop your dick, your dick a little bit. Drop your dick. What are you talking about? You like that shit, fella. <laughs> you fuck 10 girls on that day in one day. <laughs> he had my nurses up here, you know, lined up, throwing trains on. I ain't gonna throw no train on your nurses, man. That'd be Uncle Darrell trying to fuck them nurses. Remember he bought Popeyes for the whole staff up there? And you did. You no, know, that was that was your Everybody brother. Everybody on my phone. That was your brother did that. And no, you did that. Yeah, <laughs> it's the only way. Cause you got mad, he ain't breaking no chicken. Couldn't even touch it. You got she, mad cause he ain't breaking no chicken. She got mad. She did it. The nurse got mad cause she ain't brought me no checkers. <laughs> and I report her ass. Bitch, don't get my food. <laughs> she told the nurse, uh, the. The nurse said, how you doing? She told me, how you doing, bitch? You look bad. <laughs> <laughs> you, you look hard. Oh, uh, that lady crazy, man. <laughs> you remember you was making some parts tell me, you, James Jones, yeah, his mom. Yeah, look, he called you a bitch, and I locked him out in the backyard. <laughs> that man, I'm scared of you. <laughs> he cool, I ain't seen him run. Bill. <laughs> and, he, and then he took my bill. <laughs> I went off on that bitch. How you feeling on you alright? I'm good. How you doing? My mama did poetry. Like she was real good at poems. A lot of people don't know that, like, but she was real good at poems. And my daddy was a DJ. So it was kinda like in my in my DNA. Like, yeah. After my first charge, like, when I came, like, when I went to jail, I started writing even more. And, um, when I got out, I dropped my first mixtape, and the whole city just fell in love with it, you know what I'm saying? Come on. Hello, 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 hello. One, two, three. Oh, wait, no. Y'all cheating, man. It's my, it's my life itself, like my mama, my kids, you know, all that. Like, I got so many people depending on me, and I know this, like, I'm gonna say the easy way out, you know, versus the street, so that's why I'm so dedicated with it, like. And I know I'm raw, too, like, I'm real sick with this shit. Like, I know, you know, when the world hit, like, I know it's gonna be big. The nigga slapped the trunk of the car. So I parked the car and jumped out. I'm like, man, what's going on? What happened? The dude swang on me. The other one of the Chico dudes swung and knocked him slap out, right? So when I knock him out, the other one's trying to park their bikes now, but the shit was like some movie shit. Like, I wish he was here to tell you the shit, bro. No cap. But the niggas was like in a video game stance. <laughs>